Hello and welcome. In this video, I will be providing an overview of the Resource Capacity Planner Excel template. This template can be used to understand the capacity of resources that you have and compare that capacity with the demand in order to calculate the surplus or deficit capacity that you have. And this template could be used in many different scenarios. For example, you could be um, managing a team of employees and you want to understand and plan the capacity every month. And similarly, you or, or you could be a project manager who is working on a multi-month project with a lot of resources and you're trying to understand overall capacity that you have and whether you have enough capacity to go through the project. So this template uses certain inputs to automatically calculate the capacity. For example, the resources standard availability and then any vacation or overtime taken by the resources and any company holidays or weekends. So all of these will be factored in to calculate the capacity automatically and then they will be compared with the demand data. And this will be done by the template to calculate the surplus or deficit in capacity. And this template uses the term resource in most places and the most common resource that is used in most uh, scenarios is human resource or in other words employees so when you see the term resource if you in your organization your main um, um, focus is about employee availability and employee capacity so please consider resource and employee are uh, as interchangeable terms for this template so now I have the template open with some sample data already entered. So I'm going to go through and show you the different sheets in this template so that you can get a better understanding of what the template can provide. The first sheet is the setting sheet and the setting sheet has six inputs and this is where you would begin. So in this template, you can provide demand data demand meaning how many hours of work is actually needed to be done um, you can actually provide that weekly or daily or monthly levels so by default i'm going to set it to weekly so the maximum duration that the template can handle is 52 weeks and if you're doing it at a daily level it is 52 days and if you're doing it at a monthly level it's 12 months so the maximum is one year the planning period you can start from any date and end at any date but as i said the maximum planning period is one year in this case i've put first january 2016 and ending on 9th june 2016 and i am setting saturday and sundays as my weekends and you can change this to any way the weekends are done in your organization and the the capacity of your resources will be set to zero during weekends by default and the planning unit is hours so you can have planning units as hours or resource count so in many cases you want to plan your capacity in terms of number of hours of uh, available resource but sometimes you may also want to think about it as how many resources i have or how many employees i have so in those cases you will choose resource count as your planning unit otherwise you will choose the number of hours holidays are the holidays in your organization where the resources will be set to not available or zero capacity so you can enter any number of holidays here skill groups so the template can handle up to 100 resources or 100 employees and you we are going to group those employees or resources into skill groups so this is done because for example i have entered five different skill groups here so in your organization you may have three people who are developers two of them are testers you have one project manager you may have two people in the on the in the it team you may have one person in the marketing team and and so on so we are grouping the employees into groups based on skill and this is helpful to understand how much capacity do we have in each skill group and in this table you will enter skill groups and there could be an up to 30 different skill groups and then also you will enter the cost per hour so that means for each hour of this specific skill group resource how much is it going to cost me so this is the input that you will provide here and now then 
we go to the resources sheet which is where we enter the as i said we can enter up to 100 resources here so you're going to enter the resource the date when the resource becomes available and towards the end you will have the end date where if the resource leaves the project or leaves midway during the planning period you can easily enter the end date here if a resource joins the team midway, then you will enter the start date of the resource. So this is very, very flexible to suit your needs. Then you have the weekdays, and this is the number of hours for each weekday that the resource is available. So for example, employee one is gonna be available Monday through Friday, eight hours a day, but not available on Saturday and Sunday. And you will assign each employee to a skill group and the skill groups that we set in the setting sheet, you will choose from one of those. So this is your input on standard availability of your resources. Then finally, we have vacation or overtime. This is where you could enter information about if an employee is taking any vacation or doing overtime. You put in the employee name, type in the date when this is gonna happen, and then you will put positive value if the employee is going to work overtime which means more capacity. And then you will enter negative value if the employee is taking vacation, which means your capacity is going to reduce. So this is the table to enter that information. So then we go to the capacity sheet, which is automatically calculated for you. And so the green color sheets are automatically calculated. And we go to the capacity sheet. Now, all of the input that we provided previously have been taken into account and the capacity is automatically calculated for you. So by each skill group, for each period, you will see the available capacity in number of hours. And finally, we also have the total towards the end. So this is fully automated capacity calculations. And the demand sheet is where you could say, this is my demand. So in the specific week beginning on 1st January, I need 30 hours of developer resources, I need 20 hours of tester, I need 20 of project manager, 15 of IT and five of marketing. So this is the input that you will enter. And of course, if your capacity, if your demand is consistently the same, you just select all these cells for it, let's say it's 30. So I'm gonna type 30 and hit plus, press control enter and that will set the all these cells to be 30 so that's a um, you know shortcut to enter the same value in a lot of cells and that will come in handy if you have consistent demand week after week but you can definitely enter varying demand depending on your scenario so this is your demand data input and that's it everything else is automatic and so we go to the surplus deficit sheet this will tell you whether you have surplus capacity or deficit capacity. And so you can see, for example, the developer resource, you are consistently having surplus capacity, meaning you have more than you need. And the tester, it kind of varies. Sometimes it's you know exactly matching demand, sometimes it's less. Most of the time it's more. On the other hand, IT, you have deficit in capacity most of the time. So in a very, very, you know, uh, easy way, you can look at the different skill groups and identify where you are lacking in capacity so that you can go and add a resource or increase the time available from an existing resource so that you can meet the demand. So this is the, this is the automatically calculated surplus deficit sheet. Then we have the summary sheet, which is the um, basic metric summarized for you overall the overall total capacity in hours, total demand in hours, do you have surplus or deficit, and then the demand capacity ratio. And similarly, because we know the cost for each skill group, we can calculate the capacity cost and demand cost. And basically, um, if the capacity cost is more, that means if you're already paying for all these resources, then you have paid a lot more than you really need. So you can get uh, either get more work from them or you can move them to a different project. And the similarly, the surplus capacity uh, or deficit cost and then the demand capacity ratio there. So all of these are automatically calculated for you. And then when we think about the, uh, the same information in terms of charts in display, and then as we scroll down, this is very important because the overall 
hours, you know, the surplus deficit could be positive, which means you have a surplus. But when you look at it by skill group, you know that you have some problems in certain skill groups. So you should always look at it by the skill groups in order to fully understand your exist, um, capacity versus demand. And this is by hours. So you have total 909 hours of capacity in developer skill group and you have 690 hours in demand. So that's what this chart means. And uh, you can see that for project manager, you have the capacity, which is 536, but then the demand is 590. So you have more demand. And this is very clear from this chart, which shows the surplus and deficit. So project manager, red, deficit, you have a problem, you have a problem. Uh, I mean, you could consider even surplus capacity as a problem because you have a lot more uh, resource available. So what are you gonna do about um, how to make the best use of those resources? So, but this chart helps you identify these areas and the magnitude of the difference in capacity and demand. So that's the uh, helpful part. And the skill group chart, basically you can choose one of the skill groups and you can see the capacity versus demand over time. And this is important to note because looking cumulatively at these charts may tell a certain story. Hey, this is great, you know, the developer resource, you, you have extra capacity overall, but maybe the extra capacity is happening in a certain window of time, not consistently throughout. So as you can see here, initially the capacity and demand lines are very close, but as you go further, the demand has been increasing and the capacity is not uh, increasing enough. So there is a time component to these metrics and that is why that is where this chart will come in handy. So that's the summary report. And last page is the employee report. So this is the only place where I'm actually calling it as employee instead of resource, uh, because you know this is specifically to create a summary report for each employee. Um, and you're trying to understand you know, vacation uh, taken by an employee or overtime done by an employee. So you can actually see those things here, which are more applicable from an employee point of view. So you can choose any employee here, and then the, the, the sheet will get updated for you to see the overall capacity by month for that specific employee, and then any vacation or overtime taken during each month. And it will also show you capacity by day. So for example, the January month, each day, how many hours what was the capacity for each, that employee that you chose and any overtime. So in this case, the employee, even though it's a weekend, the employee has done overtime, so it's colored in purple. And these two days are holidays, company holidays. And then this specific, um, the employee is on vacation on this day. So that's why it's in blue. So when in vacation, the employee does not have any available time. So all of this is ready available for you by choosing one employee at a time. This is all print ready, so you can just hit file and hit print and you can print the sheet uh, or export it as PDF and share. And this is all the template has. So if you have any questions about this template, uh, please leave them uh, those questions in the comments and I will be very, very happy to respond to you. And thank you very much for watching this video.